Uh, and uh, the question uh, which I'll be directing to you this time around, it's we're talking about visa-free. Uh, just a handful of African countries have taken this decision, and we are hoping uh, that other African countries uh, will do the same uh, be be because we want to see a unified Africa. Africa should be unified at every uh, uh, front. So the, the question is, uh, uh, according to you, Mr. Wally, what are the uh, practical steps that should be taken by African countries uh, to ensure uh, that uh, uh, the sustainability of, of visa-free travel across Africa, especially in the 21st century, and you know that uh, as uh, the world is evolving a lot and people are evolving, and that's how Africa multilateralism is increasing in Africa. And of course, a visa free travel for Africans, I think it's another uh, advantage or another way Africans can leverage on th this aspect of multilateralism to its own advantage. So, as, as per you, what are those uh, practical steps to be taken, dear uh, Wally, to ensure the sustainability? of the visa-free travel for Africans to benefit, first of all, the African continent. Well, I will start on the note of uh, saying we have the, the facility to do that already. Um, we do not need to look in any direction apart from countries that have tested this. And I'm going to continue to cite the example of Tanzania and Kenya in particular. Mm -hmm. What William Ruto is saying now, they are just taking it to the next level. So don't let other countries also jump and just open their border. Just practice what Kenya and Tanzania have done over time. I wanted to travel to Kenya, and I know somebody at the embassy. And I called them here that, oh, I want to. He said, no, 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 just go to the internet. Everything is there. And that is People get it in two days. What happened to other countries who have not even liberalized the visa application through the internet system? So that is the starting point. It's not that everybody just come, enter. It is not, that is not what we are advocating. So to sustain this conversation, to sustain the implementation, other African countries should take the first step. Let them, let them digitize the visa application process that whether you are in your house or your phone, you don't need to go to any embassy. And let that be foolproof, secure, that is not susceptible to any, any form of security breach. Once you have done that, then you have taken the first step. And let the requirement be as simple as ABC. You don't have to ask for the death certificate of mother-in-law, father-in-law, like the example that I gave you when I started this. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is that uh, we also need to now <clears throat> begin to open up a space for business operations across countries. Let people be able to move in freely. People who have legitimate businesses to do in those countries. Then if you have been able to do this, um, I, I, I think uh, we will have been able to do 50% of the work. If it has worked in other places, I don't think see any reason why it cannot work here. And to make this thing sustainable like you have, let this idea be scaled up to the level of African Union. These old conversation must not just be agenda 2063. It has been, I mean, we've been talking about it for uh, barely a decade or more. And before you say Jack Robinson 2063 is going to be here, what are we going to hand over to the next generation? So I think AU, this conversation should be scaled up at that level. This conversation should be scaled up at regional level. Because I think the overarching objective of what this should lead us in the, di uh, the direction that this should lead us okay. is to be able to also have a common entry and common exit point. So if somebody has traveled to West Africa, for instance, let's say Ghana, such a person should also be able to enter Nigeria, enter Benin, enter Senegal. That is what is happening in the Schengen area. And I don't believe because some countries have um, what some what took some country 200 years to arrive at. We can do copy and paste and adapt what works in those places to our own context. We don't have to also wait for 200 years before we arrive at that destination. So for to make it sustainable, let's scale it up at the regional level, at the continental level, and then borrow examples that have worked in other places and other countries that are operating a draconian visa regime. 
if they will not take the first mover advantage, I think they are going to be left behind. That is just the reality. And I think that is where um, Mr. Elijah started this conversation. If you won't take the first mover advantage, you are going to be left behind. It's very simple in this globalized era.